Welcome to part two of design considerations for a Neo4j graph database. There's a couple of things I want to talk about with design of Neo4j databases, and one of them is ternary relationships. A ternary relationship is a relationship between three entities. Uh, so, for example, consider um, these test drives and consider a car, many cars, many customers and many sales people. And the salesperson will, will, will run a test drive with a particular car and a particular customer. And that's pretty easy to model in a relational database. In a relational database, you'll have a table for all this. The primary key of the table might be a test ID. And the foreign keys, it would have three foreign keys for the three ternary relationships. It's got a foreign key to the car ID, a foreign key to the salesman ID, and a foreign key to the customer ID. And the relationship itself might have an attribute, like the date and time of the test drive. Okay, that's, that's fairly straightforward. But it doesn't work quite so well in Neo4j, because Neo4j only allows binary relationships. Now, if we look back at this table, of these four rows and test drives, we've modeled these relationships in Neo4j. So you're going to see a relationship between salesman 105 and car 801, between salesman 122 and car 988 and 801, and relationships between the salesman and the customers. So we're going to take this ternary relationship and do the only thing we can do in Neo4j, which is to decompose it into binary relationships. However, when you decompose into binary relationships, you have the potential for data loss. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at salesperson 122. Salesperson 122, we know, has tried to sell car 129801. So he tries to sell this. And that's great, um, but who did he try to sell it to? We know that customer 4025 test drove it. We know that customer 4021 test drove it. And 4031 also test drove it. But there's no way for me to tell which of those customers test drove with, with 122. Because some of them may have test driven that car with salesperson 105. Now, salesperson 105, we know from the red arrows that he interacted with customers 4025 and 4021. That's great. But which car did he test drive with 4021? Well, 4021 definitely test drove car 801, but she also test drove car 988. So you can see right away that we have data loss and we need a way to deal with it. So these are some possible solutions. Bear in mind that these possible solutions are not perfect. Neo4j is not meant to model ternary relationships, but we can do our best if we have to. One thing you can do is you can put a timestamp on all the relationships, and then you can match them up based on the timestamp. So in this particular case, we know that uh, 105 worked with customer 4025 at 10 o'clock. And we know that 4025 worked with uh, test drove this car also at 10 o'clock. And we know that salesman 105 worked with this car also at 10 o'clock. So if that's and that's every particular day. So if we know this, we can say that this red arrow and this green arrow and this yellow arrow are all related to each other because they have the same timestamp. Does that work? Yeah, somewhat. Um, when I retrieve the network, when I run a query, I will see these relationships and I'll be able to inspect them to find out when the timestamp was and then infer that, oh, they all were working together, those three entities at that point in time. Uh, but it's difficult to query and it's terribly error prone. I'm recording a timestamp three times 
And what if I made a mistake in one of those recording of the timestamps? Then I would break the connection. All right, there's another way we could do it. We could add a property to a relationship that happens to be a node. Remember that relationships are between two nodes and only two nodes. But if I could add a property to that relationship that kind of sort of linked me to a different node, I can mimic the ternary relationship. So in this example, we have a salesperson trying to sell a customer. And if I could take that tries to sell relationship and add a car ID to it, then I might have the car, the customer, and the salesperson all tied together. So is it possible? Sure. This is uh, 122 working with customer 4031. I can, now I happen to know this one's pretty obvious from the data, but that's just a coincidence. But I do happen to know that he worked with car 129801. So I could put a date here, like maybe this was at nine o'clock in the morning. And we worked with car 129801. So now the relationship has a reference to a node. Is that good? It's very inelegant um, because now my car is both a node and a property. Uh, this is error prone if my car ID is not properly recorded. If I made a mistake in a number, I would lose the connection. Uh, there's no referential integrity I can imply on this database. And uh, when I do a query, I can return that relationship. But all I'm going to return is sorry, the uh, 129.1801. I'm not going to return all the wonderful properties that I would have gotten if I had returned the node itself, like the color of the car or the make and the model of the car. Last topic is inheritance in NEO and designing inheritance. This is where NEO can shine nicely, unlike ternary relationships. And the way you do it is you uh, apply superclass and subclass labels. When you make nodes, you can give them a label, and you should. But in this case, we've given nodes multiple labels. Notice that we have two cars here in yellow. They are, they are cars, but they are also vehicles. So but these nodes are logged with both labels. And then we have three Bobs. We have Bob in blue, the mechanic, Bob in green, the customer, and Bob in red, the salesperson. Uh, so notice I have three people, but I have two employees. So it's the mechanic and the salesperson that are employees. Now, when I apply multiple labels and really applying a super class label like employee, and applying a subclass label like mechanic or salesperson, by applying two different labels to a node, I can enable the following queries. Um, the first one is a very generic query. Um, I found a wallet in the car. I wonder who could have left it there. Well, I can just match any node that has a relationship with this car or this VIN number and I will find all the people that have interacted with a car, no matter what kind of person that they were. Um, I can run a second query where I can use my node and, and, and be more specific in what type I'm looking for. I'm looking for employees. So now, same query as above, only now employees associated with this car. So I'm going to find out that, you know, Bob the mechanic was involved with this car, as well as Bob the salesperson because I'm searching at the employee level, and they're both employee nodes. But then I can run this query um, where I'm matching mechanics, and I'm using the inspects. Now, remember that mechanics and salespersons could both inspect the car. So I am focusing now on who inspected this car mechanically, so I'm going to look for the mechanic nodes. And then all I will find then is Bob the mechanic. But I could have the corollary query here, where I inspect the same car, but I search for the salesperson who does so. And with this way, I can target my queries with either a superclass label like employee 
or subclass labels like mechanic and salesperson. And this is how you would model ternary relationships, inheritance, in Neo4j. Thanks for watching.